Okay, welcome, welcome. Let's get this started. I am super excited to be sharing with you guys today. Um, I apologize if you hear dogs barking um, because there is one. My husband is, has been in and out, so um, I closed the door, but nobody pays attention. Anyhow, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm excited to be able to host this first nutrition workshop for you guys. Um, I was trying to be really concise with def, you know the bullet points of what I want to you know share with you guys. I didn't want to have to make this super long-winded. And I also wanted to leave it open for us to be able to do future nutrition workshops on specific items and interests based on your feedback and stuff. So I'm excited to be able to do this with you guys today. Um, I will watch the chat. So if you have any questions, please fire away. This is being recorded. So I will make sure to share this in all the places that I need to. Um, and I will be bringing in people as they are coming into the waiting room. Just make sure that when you come in, if you can uh, mute yourself, that would be awesome. Um, and we will get started here as soon as we can. Okay, so welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm super excited about this, you guys. And um, I did, like I said, I have notes that I wanna share with you guys. So pardon if I refer back and forth, but just make sure that you're muted when you come in. And um, then I, if anyone's in the waiting room, I'll make sure to be checking on that on so on and so forth. So. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Megan Anderson, and I am, um, I have been in the fitness and health industry now for seven years. This is my seventh year doing this. I just actually had my anniversary uh, this past week. So uh, in my previous life, my husband and I were business owners, and we owned our own commercial AV business, which is so weird to think. It just seems like light years ago. Um, but for me, my story began, um, more than 20 years ago with health and fitness. Um, I, I sought out something to do for myself specifically. I was a busy working mom and I needed to find something that was going to help me, um, save time from home. I really just struggled like getting to the gym and that sort of thing. So, that's where my journey started. And so if you know me, you know that I've been doing home Hi, workouts. This is Dale's driving before. school. Um, my name's John. So if you know, when, and when you guys come in here, make sure that you guys are muted. So I get you guys muted there. Um, um, oh my gosh, I lost my straight of thought. Um, so if you know you've been following me, you know that I have been um, doing my home workouts for a long, 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 long time. And for me, this was like the best part of my day. So when the opportunity to go into a um, health and fitness or a fitness business with the programs that I already love um, seemed like a no brainer. Um, so when the opportunity to become a beach body coach fell into my lap, I was, I was pretty much all in from the get go. Um, and I love it. I loved it. I, I love the programs. I loved the whole process and everything. So that's how my journey started as far as that um, is considered. And um, becoming a beach body coach actually opened up a bunch of different doors for me. Um, I was able to um, step out of my comfort zone and get certified to teach Insanity, um, P90X, Pio, um, several of their brands um, I have been able to teach. And then um, several years ago, decided to go for my precision nutrition certification. So I am a PN certified nutrition coach. Um, and I love that um, having so many personal experiences helps me to just uh, be able to help so many other people in so many other ways. And I also love that all the different certifications that I've decided to be, become a part of uh, align themselves with Beachbody's philosophy and that too. So it's really fun to be able to share all the different things and share my experiences with you guys. So that's just a little bit of a background on me. Um, the reasoning for me actually throwing me into my precision nutrition certification was because I wanted to help myself. Um, I had always loved the fitness piece, but the nutrition part was something I always struggled with. And lo and behold, that is, that is typically what most people struggle with is the nutrition part. I feel like it's easy to move your body. It's not always easy to stay consistent with your nutrition or know what to eat. And, and that was where I was. I didn't know what to eat. I was brought up in an environment 
Um, and as a kid watching my parents and my mom in that fat free, low fat society, right? So, um, you basically were supposed to work out and like starve yourself. Like there was all those connotations, like just to give you a frame of reference, I am 47 years old. So I grew up in the eighties, the nineties and that sort of genre of time. Right. And so we have learned so much since then, right. We have come so far in our learning and I love that. Um, and, and I used to have all these, you know, connotations, negative connotations, just like everyone else that you have to like starve to get a six pack and, and all of that kind of stuff, which couldn't be further from the truth. So I knew that there was a missing link there. Like I really loved the fitness part, like I said, but I knew that I need to figure out the food part in order to really get to the results that I needed. And so, um, when I started, you know, applying the nutritional theories to what it is that I was doing in my fitness, I saw instant re results in like 60 days. I started to see my body composition change. And what the weird thing was, is I was eating way more food than I was prior to that. So like, I'm thinking in my head, using the insanity background, uh, my background, when I was doing insanity, I, that was where I started uh, with my beach body journey. And I felt like I was just killing myself, but I was like, you know, either eating crap or not e eating enough food. And when I started to, um, you know, really learn how, about how to fuel my body, that's when everything really changed. So I'm excited to be able to share that stuff with you guys too. Um, and I also feel like understanding, you know, why food and what it does, like that was another big part for me was really understanding really understanding why the science behind it, right? So for me, it was really about, I'm just gonna mute you guys when you come in here. Okay, good. Um, for me, it was really about understanding the science behind food because it's not enough to say, here, eat this, eat, eat this there. I really wanted to understand why, why I was eating what and what it was doing for me or to me. Um, I was also at a place where I was like, I'm, you know, dogging my workouts, like what's happening where I can't, uh, I want it to eat for, for performance, you know, and, and all of those things. And so that, again, uh, another big reason that led me to my nutrition certification. So um, let's see, like I said, I got my notes here. I want to make sure to touch upon everything for you guys. You know, the big thing that I want you guys to understand is that like we are, like snowflakes. Everybody is so different. Um, the way that we absorb food, the way that uh, we expend our food, um, our body composition, we certainly all could have different goals, but even the way that your body just um, breaks down food and whether it's carbs or sugars or proteins or fat, like there are different body types. Some people have a fat fast metabolism. Some people have a slow metabolism. Some people digest, you know, carbs better than others. Like really there are no two people that are alike. And so with everything that I'm going to share with you guys, I also want you to make sure that you're listening to your body. And I think that that's a big part of it too, because for me, you know, I have, I feel like I have a lot of different needs than other people that I help and what works for me might not work for you and might not work for the person next door, right? Um, and so that's a huge thing to realize that just because this theory worked for somebody else doesn't mean that it's going to work for you and really learning about learning as much as you can, doing your research, knowing your body and those kinds of things, right? Um, and so, you know, to understand a little bit about food um, you know, it really is comes down to energy in and energy out. Okay. Um, and, and questions that, you know, you can ask yourself about food, like, what is it? Does it mean that it's fuel? Um, you know, food is information. It's going to tell you something, um, whether you are, you become bloated from certain things or you get, um, uh, it's a trigger for inflammation. Some people have those issues, right? Food also can equal like comfort. I know for me, our families are foodies. Uh, food is entertainment. Every time that there's like a big thing, it's all about the food. Like we, we joke to this day, it's all about the food. When we all get together, we can't decide where to go to dinner. Like that's how I was brought up. So when in my mind, when there's an event coming, my first thought goes to what are we going to eat? we go there, right? And so there's a lot of that going on too, as far as how you're brought up and what you think about food. And like, 
today for me, I'm always talking to my daughter about using the right words to describe food, right? Like as adults, we have to sort of free ourselves from these things that we've learned, we have to unlearn that stuff, right? But as uh, teenagers and adolescents and, you know, kids using the right words and making sure that they understand that food is fuel, food, food isn't bad, like this food's not bad, that food's not good, right? We have to sort of change the mindset. And thinking about, you know, and that shame around some foods, like people were brought up to be, to, to, to feel shameful about eating ice cream or, or something, right? Um, and so be thinking about like, how do you want food to be, right? I feel a big part of it is that um, food shouldn't be, um, you know, that thing that we fixate on like so much, right? It, it should be, it should have its purpose. And again, for me, a light switch went off when I learned that food was fuel. Like it was the first time that I heard about that whole concept about fueling my body for the energy that it needed. Um, and not thinking about food as, um, you know, entertainment, you know, like I mentioned. Um, and so the other parts of that are, um, and I want to, I want to kind of back up, but then go forward and then help you guys with tangible things, you know, going forward. A, a lot of questions that I get from people are, um, you know, what about keto? Uh, they ask me about these different, different nutritional theories. What about low carb? Um, what about, you know, this fad or that fad or whatever, uh, they might've heard about this work really well for this person. And, um, you know, my first question, you, you know, asking those people, like, how did that work for you? They'll, they'll say to me, well, I did keto, you know, uh, last year and I lost 30 pounds and then I fell off of it. And I'm thinking to myself, well, how did that work for you then? Was that sustainable? You know, and these are questions you have to answer for yourself. You know, I feel like, with a nutritional theory like that, where you're starting to restrict this and restrict that and take away, I think you're just setting yourself up for failure, right? And you've said, I can't have carbs and I can't eat after five and I can't do this. And you've made all of these rules and restrictions and you've set the bar so high for yourself that when you fall down, then you beat yourself up. And in most cases, when people fall off the wagon in that regard, then they just eat more and go the other way. Right. And so when I talk to people about those nutritional theories, like understanding that those are advanced nutritional theories, or in the case of your doctor would maybe prescribe keto for you or something like that because of a medical condition. And that also should be followed by a doctor, you know, and again, everything that I say is this is my personal philosophy, okay? Because you can also go and research a guy that's a scientist or a doctor about keto and he'll maybe say the complete opposite of what my thoughts are. So this is my personal philosophy from what I've learned and from what I know and from what I've experienced, okay? Um, so taking that into consideration too. Um, but again, my personal theory is about having a balance of everything, right? When you start to restrict yourself, when you start to take away macronutrients, I, you're setting yourself up for um, failure because you're, when your body is craving something, let's just say you're like, I, I'm having all these chocolate cravings or I'm having like all these ice cream cravings or whatever the cravings are, that's your body telling you that you're missing vitamins and nutrients. Like you're not, if you have, when you have enough of a balance of everything, then you should have plenty of energy and you should have, um, hardly any cravings, um, to that effect, right? You you're, should be satisfied and, and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, the other thing that I will say about that too, is that you've got to walk before you can run. So if you can't be consistent eating a balance of food throughout the day and your week, then how are you going to expect to go to a, a next level? Um, I'll tell you that um, within my certification with Precision Nutrition, there are three levels of uh, clients. Level one is pretty much everybody. Um, level two kind of takes things to, you know, a little bit more of an athletic level, but is sort of, uh, you have to master the level one um, components before you can go to level two. And then a level three person would be like an elite Olympian athlete or a bodybuilder. And level threes are meant to be short-term. 
So those people are they're either getting ready for like a big event or a race, a competition, something like that. And they'll eat a specific way and train a specific way um, to get have optimal performance, right? Or if you're talking about a bikini competitor or a bodybuilder, they're eating specifically for, you know, a short length of time in order to reach that peak goal. And then typically they'll just go back to level one or level two balanced nutrition. And so it can look like macros or it can look like the containers that you might have seen me um, eat before. And that's, again, it's just macros. Um, any of the nutritional theories that I share, um, there are different approaches to the way you eat, but they all will equal balanced nutrition. Um, so for today, I was going to share with you guys a couple different aspects of what that looks like and how to fuel your body based on your activity levels and things like that. And then um, if you have questions to certainly let me know, but then, you know, meal planning for families, what that looks like. Um, uh, typically when, you know, people, most people that I work with as far as members in our community are people that are looking to lose weight or body recomposition, which means, you know, changing your body if you're going for weight training and things like that, um, which means you're turning your um, your fat into muscle essentially. Um, but there are cases where people are looking to maintain weight for sure. And then, you know, different age groups are going to apply too. So I use the example of my daughter again, because we've been, um, talking about how important it is for her to eat for her sports. I don't think that, um, the kids realize how important it is to, uh, eat and have that fuel level be up there. I think the last time I calculated hers out, it was right up to how much I'm eating every day, um, which is, which is pretty insane. Um, but you need energy in to account for your energy out. Right. Um, okay. Let's see. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Let me just make sure you have any questions or anything like that. Nothing yet. Okay. Okay. So again, going back to balanced nutrition, right? And I always love, love to refer back to, I, I really love using the containers because for me, it's a visual thing. Um, but if you're a person that likes to track uh, macros or use my fitness pal, you can do all those things too. Um, but essentially, you know, the, the big reason why we talk about portion control and um, having a balanced meal um, there are many benefits to that, right? So I always show people there's a number of different ways to accomplish that, that balanced uh, meal energy, you know, um, portion control rather, um, having small meals throughout the day, right? So we talk about, and you'll hear me often say, we'll talk about the four things. So every meal should have a protein, a carb, a vegetable, and a fat. And then sometimes you would have like a fruit in there too, just depending on where you're at, what you need to eat. But having small little meals throughout the day allows your, uh, your stomach to remain small. Um, so for, let's say, for example, you are, you go and you overeat or you go and you, um, um, out to a restaurant, you know, that full feeling because they're usually portions are so big and you, you have a big meal and you feel so full and so full. And what ends up happening is your stomach expands um, a little bit each time you do that. So the next time you go to eat again, your stomach needs that compensation. And over time, if you keep overeating, you're going to expand, expand, expand. You're going to have to keep eating more to satisfy yourself. And that's when you can see that you would run into trouble. Um, when you have small portion meals throughout the day, the other, another benefit is that um, it's going to help you with your digestion. So for example, if you, uh, one of, one of the things actually, this is a good example um, that I used to do was I hate eating vegetables. I still am not a huge fan. I've, I've made it work over the years, but what I would do is make a huge salad in the middle of the day and I would get like all my greens in at once. But what happens when you overeat even healthy stuff is there's only so much vitamins and nutrients your body can absorb. So if it can't absorb anymore, then it turns into waste and it's essentially just wasted food, right? And then you end up having gas and bloating. And the other thing is your body is working overtime to process the food. So you end up feeling like you ever, ever get the afternoon slump after you have a big lunch or Thanksgiving dinner, for example, right? You feel like you want to take a nap and stuff because your body is working overtime to break down the food and like get it going through your system, right? So it helps and aids you with digestion. And then on the flip side of that nappy feeling, when you have small meals throughout the day, 
then you, um, your energy goes, goes through the roof. So what I typically tell people when they, um, when they first get started with me, they're like, oh my gosh, this is so much food. And, um, what ends up happening is when you break down them into small portions throughout the day, you, it jump starts your metabolism, which is pretty cool. So having those small little meals throughout the day, um, not only jump starts your metabolism to help you lose weight, but it also helps you to have more energy. Right. Um, so that's really cool. I just wanted to make sure that everybody is muted. Good. Okay. Um, and so I love that too. And I noticed that immediately when I started changing that habit from having that huge salad in the middle of the day to having small little portion meals throughout the day, that was the biggest thing that changed for me was my energy too. Um, and then when you're um, active and you're eating that way, it's like a whole engine starts up and it's like a, a fire sparks and you can restart your metabolism. And a lot of, a lot of times people that have been like up and down, you know, uh, eating, yo-yoing or, or things like that, they'll find that their metabolism has slowed way down. So this is a really awesome way to sort of restart that by having those small meals throughout the day. Um, cool. All right. I just want to make sure that I'm hitting all the things. And so having a balance of food, you're typically eating 40% um, carbohydrates, 30% lean proteins, and 30% healthy fats. And that's pretty much where the balance lies. And that's pretty average for most people. Like I said, there's specific instances where you might need to change things. Body types are different and things like that. Um, but that's typically where we start. And, and you know how I mentioned um, before too, about how you got to walk before you can run. Um, one of the things that I always implement is to make sure to say, you know, to let you guys know that, um, you know, we want to get consistent with these habits, right? Because in the beginning, when you're first starting something, consistency is key. And if you um, can't stay consistent with it, then you're also never going to see results, right? I feel like this is something that I struggle with too, where we want an instant gratification. We want to see our body change and we don't realize that it takes time and it takes a lot of patience for us to be implementing all these different things and then to see, you know, it come to fruition. And then the other thing is a lot of times it's hard to stay on track with your food too, right? And I'm I'm totally not saying you have to be 100% perfect because that's super unrealistic. But if you have a guideline to follow and you're like 80% on track most of the time, then you will see that those results. But staying consistent um, is going to be super important for you to see the results that you want. Um, let me just make sure you're here. Oh, I want to pull up this graphic for you guys. Okay, so we talked about portion control. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna, I gotta pull this up. I meant to pull this up earlier. Let me share my screen with you. Give me one second. If you guys have any questions, make sure you drop them below and I'll come back and ask them. I'll answer them after. Um, I want to get into like the nitty gritty with you guys. Okay, so I kind of briefly touched upon this too. Okay, so talking about we talked about a little bit about the portion control and we, and I mentioned to you guys about the four things. So this is something that you can take away immediately learning how to eat the right things. Okay. And I feel like this is really good for anyone, even if you just don't even know where to start, right? Because this is a good jumping point. And then once you sort of get the hang of it, then we can say, okay, you're ready for the next step. Right. And I'm, you'll always hear me say, I'm always talking about the next level philosophy, because I feel like there's always going to be ways for you to, to get better and go to the next level, right? So typically when I start off working with someone, we'll talk about the things that are important are making sure you're getting enough water, making sure that you're staying active and making sure that 
um, I usually have them pick one healthy meal a day, right? That they create for themselves, whether they're drinking Shakeology or um, they're having a healthy breakfast or a healthy post-workout or something like that, right? So we wanna be consistent and we wanna work on those consistent things every single day. And then, you know, let's say after 30 days, you're like, okay, I'm nailing all the things. I'm working out, I'm drinking my water, I'm getting plenty of water, I'm getting plenty of sleep, I'm getting my healthy meal or my Shakeology. Now I'm ready for the next thing. And we sort of build on that, right? So this is a really good place to start again, because the other reason I like this is because you can take this on the go with you two so we talk about building a perfect meal okay so what does a perfect meal look like as i mentioned protein vegetable um a smart carb which they call them so it could be you know potatoes beans squash it doesn't mean you can't ever have bread i eat bread um i think it's just a matter of knowing how much to eat right so these are all your sort of examples and then your healthy fats right so lean meats um, peanuts, avocados, um, butters, oils, like all those kinds of things. Um, so having a well-rounded plate, and again, like when you go out to dinner and stuff, or we, if you go to somebody's house or a cookout, you can also use this sort of in your head going, okay, I know what I need today. And then you can use your hands to be your, your portion control containers, right? Or, or your, you don't have to necessarily weigh or measure or whatever, right? You can sort of eyeball it, which is great. Um, and so I love having this like jump starting this way. So you can sort of get, get an idea of what you need to have, okay? And what I typically will tell most people that are just getting started is you wanna think about having at least three meals like this a day, at least if not more. And I will also tell you that more times than not, you should be eating more. Um, that's probably the biggest thing that people give me pushback on is it's so much food. Oh my gosh, it's so much food. Do I really have to eat all this? Yes. Yes, yes. So I was trying to figure out the best way to like explain to you guys too um, with, with numbers and like doing the math. But if you take, for example, somebody, um, and I know that there's these, uh, I have these, what do you call it? Uh, the equation, the equation, like, because you can figure it out with science, right? You can figure out what you need with science for sure with the numbers, right? But if you take, um, okay, here, 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 here. let's just take, for example, me. So um, we're going to use 140, so I weigh 140 pounds, okay, times, we're going to use a multiplier of 11. There's, there's different multipliers. We're just going to use this as like an average one. Um, equals 1,540 calories. And so now we want to add um, my activity. Let's just use uh, 400 calories as like, say my workout or whatever. So that comes out to 1940. Let's just run it up to average 2000 calories. I need to eat 2000 calories every single day to not change my body at all. Like to maintain my, my body, I need 2000 calories in order to not drop any weight, not gain any weight. Okay. Now, if you are a person that needs to lose weight, you would subtract 750 from that. And now for me, this comes out to be 1190 calories. And I'll tell you right now, that's not enough for me. I will, I would die. I'd be starving. I would never be able to get, you know, eat that little. Um, so what, what I want to say to you is everybody's, we talked about how everybody's different, right? But for me, I want to change my body composition. And so that maintenance, that maintenance number that I gave you 2000 is pretty much borderline for me to build muscle. Like that's maintaining the muscle that I've already built and um, anything that I want to build on. Right. So if you're a person where you're trying to change your body composition, you're going to fall like right below that maintenance mark. Right. But again, case by case by case basis. But I want you guys to know that you need, you know, a minimum number, a minimum amount of food in order to just function. OK. Um, all right, let me just go. I want to make sure that I I'm looking at this here for you guys. 
And so if we're looking at No, everyone is on a case by case basis, especially if you're depending on what activity level you're at and what you're doing and things like that too, right? So if we take into consideration, oh, here it is. This is what I was looking for. Yet that multiplier is gonna change based on the number of hours that you're working out, right? And the number of hours that you're doing. So if you're in the sports and you're doing your sport and you're working out, or you have a really active lifestyle, then that is gonna even be more so for you, okay? Um, but this is a good place to start, right? These three, the four things, three times a day, okay? I want you guys to make sure I, that you Use that and then you guys know the the containers are the same thing those essentially are the same measuring tools it's not any different or or more or less but you know if you guys want to dive into it on a one-on-one -on -one basis we can always talk about it um together uh too I, I i hate giving a lot of generalized things to people just because everybody's different and it's hard for me to say okay well like i just told you guys it works for me might not work for you right and what you're doing is maybe not as active as what I'm doing or vice versa, right? And then your age and those things take into considerations too. Okay, so like, we'll go back to the example that I was talking about um, with my daughter. Um, and Lauren, this can apply to you too, because I know how active you are as well. So we can use the example of, um, so, consider an active child. So moderately active child would be um, spends at least an hour a day, three days a week or more playing outside basketball, playing a game. Active child is who has an hour or more of moderate to an intense physical activity daily. So I feel like, you know, Riley sort of borderlines on the moderately active, just depending on what time of year it is. Um, so we're going to use the, we'll just use the moderately active for an, an example. Um, and so they fall into nine to 13 year old girls are at 1600 to 2000 calories a day. So that's more, that's a little bit more than what I eat. That's, that's my maintenance, right? Um, and so in order to sustain that activity level and it get in this um, guide that I'm looking at actually gives you the, the number of vegetables, the number of fruits, the number of protein servings, the number of carbs, fats, etc. So um, I can share that with you guys too, as far as what that goes for goes to. Um, but I would say especially um, someone that is looking to maintain their energy throughout their sport, um, I mean, you guys, you're, you're growing too. That's such a huge part of that, the stage of life, like going through puberty, your body's like in overtime, right. And you're growing in different places and, and the sports though, I think is huge. Like more often than not, you know, my daughter will tell me, um, I don't feel good or I have a stomach ache or I started playing and I was tired or she comes home and she's like beat and I'm like, what have you eaten today, right? And so being able to make sure to maintain, you know, all the energy that, that you've expended and then, you, like I said, your metabolisms are, are kind of going insane a little bit too, just in general from being a, a teenager, tween, teen, whatever. Um, okay, let's see what else I got here. Um... Okay, so the last thing that I was going to share with you guys is how I plan for my families as far as meal planning. A big question I get all the time is um, how do I stay consistent and eat and feed my teenager and my nine year old and um, how does that look. So, um, you know, I'm not going to lie. A lot of days are like restaurants because I'm not going to eat chicken nuggets or mac and cheese. I'm just not. Um, so I don't mind making different sides for people. But what ends up happening is I plan as uh, a family as a whole. 
And then I portion out mine, what I'm having, or for example, I'll make a different side. So for example, if we say we're making a roasted chicken and we have, you know, mashed potatoes, gravy, a vegetable, um, you know, my son will eat the potato in a different form, um, but he eats the chicken. My husband eats the chicken. My husband eats the gravy. I don't have the gravy. Sometimes I'll put cheese on my potato instead of the gravy. Um, you know, different things like that. Or I might do a sweet potato and put sun butter or almond butter on it and just change it so that we're all eating the same thing, but that everybody has a, a different thing. And usually we can pull in one of the two little kids with that too. Um, or somebody's always going to be the odd one out. But the good news is, is that my oldest used to be the same way and he is now eating food like the rest of us. So that is a plus. Um, I would say a big struggle is always like the vegetable part of things. We're still a work in progress on that stuff. Um, but as far as keeping myself on track, what I will do for my planning day is I plan my days backwards. So um, I have a, a chart. This is the kids chart, but similar to this, I have a chart of what I need to fulfill for myself in a given day, how many starches, how many proteins and things in a given day. Um, and so I will plan my plan backwards, plan dinner first. So um, plug in the holes there. There's my protein, my carb, my vegetable, my healthy fat. And then, uh, and so that's my given. I'll start there. And then my next thing I'll plan will be, I know I'm going to have my Shakeology every single day. And I know what that is included of. So that's my protein. I usually have a fruit with that. There'll be a healthy fat with that. And then um, plug in the holes after that. So I know I pretty much eat the same thing for breakfast, um, you know, eggs and toast and a vegetable or eggs and a potato. Um, again, the four things are in there. Um, and then, um, lunch is a salad. I have, I no longer have a giant salad. I have an average salad, but um, again, I'll put beans on it and chicken, like just, just depends on, um, and that usually is what I have left with salad dressing is my fat and things like that. So when you're thinking about planning for your family, you can start and plan the day backwards, right? Think of the I actually approach it the same way I plan my week out when you think about it. I plug in the have to's and the must do's and the things that I can't change because I'm alone most of the day other than dinner. So I know that dinner is going to be specific and then I know that I'm going to drink my shake and I know what my breakfast is like. Then I just plug the holes in from there um, to equal out all the things that I need in, the, in a given day. Um, I think that's it, you guys. What, do you have any questions for me? I know that some people have specific, does anyone have a specific concern or a specific something to them or um, questions on anything that I mentioned? Um, nothing, nothing, no one, no one. Um, all right, you guys. Uh, I feel like it was a lot of information, but I have these different PDFs that I can share with you if you want to kind of drill down into what it is that you specifically need. And then I'm happy to talk, you know, one on one with any of you guys. If you're, you know, have, you have a certain goal in mind and you want to just make sure that you're you know, eating the right things for the goal. Um, you know, I think it's just super important, you know, that you understand that food is the, is fuel, right? And, and that's a, a big thing that um, we have to battle because I think a lot of times we, like I said, we have those ne negative connotations when it comes to food. We have bad habits that we have to unlearn and understanding that food is, is fueling our bodies for the, for what it needs is super important. Like you wouldn't go down the street and let your car run out of gas. And, and so here's the last point that I'll leave you with. If you aren't eating enough food, so when you expend energy, when you do your sport, when you work out, when you're going about your day, even just doing, you know, your work or whatever, your body is get is, is burning calories and burning fuel from your body. And if there's no food in your in your body for it to pull from, where do you suppose it pulls from? It pulls from your organs, it pulls from your muscles, right? And so it's like running, driving down the street with 
um, no gas in your car. It, going on fumes is not really going to get you far, right? So you could be, you'll end up being tired faster. You're not going to be able to, um, s you know, push harder in your sport or push harder in the gym. Like that's a bit, the biggest thing that I've noticed for myself. Um, when I was getting ready to prep for the bikini competitions I did several years ago, that was a specific eating strategy. And it was a lot of no carbs and lots of protein. And the idea was to, cause when you're eating carbs, it's like water in your body, right? So when you have no carbs, you, you visually are leaning out. And so you're getting that visual effect that the bikini competition girls have is, is you're seeing that water away from your body that, that we won't even go into that. Um, not recommended long-term. Um, but what I, the biggest thing I noticed during that was um, they wanted me to lift as hard as I could in the gym during that time too. And I couldn't do it. Like I just did my best, but I felt like I wanted to pass out. I did not feel good. And so for me, I love eating before I lift in the gym because it helps me to push. It helps me to give me like the surge of energy, the carbs like push me. And I, I honestly feel like superwoman if, if I time it right. When I'm eating, I have something small and then I go into the gym. Um, and I imagine that must be that same way when you're, you're playing your sport and things like that too. Um, and so again, knowing your body, like tweaking it, like I feel like some people do better with carbs and protein before they work out, but you know, that sort of thing, but learning your body, understanding what to eat and fueling your body for your, for perform, for performance, eating for, for, for performance. That's what I always like to say. Okay. Um, so let me know if you guys have any other questions. Um, I'll post the recording up in that event page at some point. So you can watch again if you missed it. Um, and have a good day. Bye guys.